Many people go through life wishing they could understand the realm of the spirit and the warfare that goes on behind the scenes. In his brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, Dr. Kevin Zadai helps you to develop your ability to engage the enemy on every level. Kevin's brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, will help equip you to learn to recognize God's direction for your life, encounter clarity in knowing God's battle strategies against your enemies, exercise your authority as a believer, walk in increased discernment through the Holy Spirit's power, and much, much more. In this exclusive offer, Kevin also prays impartation prayers on each CD to help you in your advance against the enemy. Order today Kevin's brand new study guide and exclusive three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1. For a donation of $29, U.S. shipping and handling included. To order, call 888-340-1460 with offer code 1002 or go online to kevinzadai.com slash offer. It's time to stand up for your rights as a Christian and give the devil a headache. Hello, everyone. Dr. Kevin Zadai with you with Warrior Notes School of Ministry and Warrior Notes Ministries. Thank you for joining us on the Spirit School this weekend. We are in the 2 p.m. session on Holy Fire, and God is a good God, and He is also holy. And we're going to talk about that today. You are set apart as a chosen vessel. God has chosen you. You are a special person, and God has caused us to triumph in these times that we live in. God is always causing us to triumph in Christ Jesus, as Paul said. So we're going to get right into chapter three here in our school. And this is called living the crucified life. So many people have contacted me. I mean, every day I'm, I'm getting asked, can you talk about the crucified life? Well, how do I live the crucified life? And so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about that. The Lord Jesus Christ is very concerned about everything that you go through every day. He's very concerned about your life. He is looking over you, watching over you, and he has great plans for you. However, there are certain things that he knows you need to do, that you need to know, that you need to see and to hear. He knows that. So he's got to get that over to you. How does he do that? He does that through the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives revelation to the Word of God. So everything we need for life and godliness has been given to us through the promises that God has given us in his Word. It's all there in his word. So when you start talking about holy fire and start talking about the crucified life and, and uh, living a life that is laid down for Jesus, the devil does not like that. He starts to act up and he acts up all the time. Every single time that we talk about holy fire warrior notes, he acts up big time. He is crazy. He's losing it. He is so, so defeated in your life right now. Jesus has made a show of him openly, and he's caused us to triumph, and this is how we triumph. We have faith in God. Now, we have faith in God because our spirit is born again, and our spirit has the, the God kind of faith in it. Did you know that, that your spirit needs to be built up, but it's got the seed of the Word of God in it because you're born again? You have an incorruptible seed inside of you. It's the Word of God. So Jesus is inside of you, and He is wanting to manifest in your life. Now, you need to build yourself up by praying in the Holy Spirit, and you also need to search out, seek out the Word that has been, been given to you through the Bible. You need to know the Bible uh, back backwards, forwards, upside down. Just read it. Read it. Meditate on it. Concentrate on heavenly things. Your environment is supposed to be heavenly. And this world has tried to take over and get attention in your life. And the devil tries to act up in order to get people's attention and draw us away from Jesus. We need to focus on Jesus. Paul talked to the Galatians in, in chapter 2, verse 20. He said this, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live 
in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, so this, this is a, a very rich scripture that you've heard before, and we quote it so quickly, and almost uh, to the point where we, we think we know what we're saying because it's mentally agreeing with it. But do you know that that you can mentally agree with something and and not actually participate in the power of it? Because there is a lot of spiritual truth here that has to go down in your heart. And your heart is where you change. The real you is your heart. See, you know, the world wants to focus on on getting people's minds full of knowledge. And yet our hearts are where God lives, and that's where the understanding comes. You see, I live and I move and I have my being in Jesus. I don't live and move and have my being in the world or in in knowledge. You know, knowledge by itself uh, just produces death because the law produced death. You know, that's what that's what Paul talked about is that when the law came, sin revived and I died. He said that the stuff that I wanted to do, I couldn't do. And the stuff that I didn't want to do, I did. You know, this is in Romans chapter 7. This is because the law, uh, it's, it's not possible to fulfill all the law. That's why the young, the young man, the rich young ruler, when, when he said, I've done everything perfect since birth, you know, since a child, that, that uh, Jesus just looked at him and loved him because he knew he was wrong. There was no one perfect. He said, I have obeyed all, uh, everything, all the law since birth. And um, Jesus said, you just lack one thing. Just give everything you have to the poor and then come and follow me and have treasure in heaven. And he couldn't do it. You see, you, you're, you're not as perfect as you think. And, and then when the law comes, sin revives and you die. That's what happened to Paul. Now in Romans 8, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. And he said, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the crucified life is the way to go. The crucified life is actually going to come back and be very popular because holy fire has already started in the believer's life. Everywhere people are experiencing this this fire, this holiness, because the body of Christ is being purged and cleansed right now because we're getting ready for the wedding feast. Jesus is coming back for a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. And the fire will purge and cause us to come into this beauty that God sees uh, on us. And Jesus comes back and takes us to be with him. And we're going to be with him forever. This is all culminating at the end of the age right now. This final move of God is, is about the glory. It's about the fire. It's the holy fire. So the crucified life is going to have to come back and be very popular and so no one else is really talking about it. So I figure, well, you know, I don't have anything else to do. Um, so I'm just going to bring it back. So I started to talk about the things that others will not talk about because they're so controversial. You know, repentance and uh, holy, holy altars and waiting on God, the fear of the Lord, the blood of Jesus, all, uh, the crucified life, you know, the holy fire. These, these things need to be talked about because they're so vital to the Christian life and getting us ready for this final move of God and also for uh, the catching away that Jesus is coming back and, and taking his bride to be with him. This is the time to stay awake. This is the time to get oil in your lamps. This is the time to be very diligent and yield to the fire. So this weekend, I had nothing else to do. So I figured, well, I'll just give the devil another headache and uh, do a spirit school. And I'm the, just so you know, I'm going to keep doing spirit schools every weekend until the devil backs off. You know, and if he doesn't back off, I'll just keep doing spirit schools. And um, I'm going to do them for free. And I'm going to keep doing stuff for free and keep talking about the fire, to keep talking about repentance and the fear of the Lord and waiting on God and the holy altars. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to back off. So he's going to have to back off. So. The crucified life is coming back as being very popular message. And the Christians need to realize that if you're going to get married, you got to get ready. And you go and you, you find uh, everything you need for the ceremony and the, 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 the dress. Everything has to be set up so that on that wedding day, everything's perfect. Okay, so that's what's happening right now. The body of Christ is being groomed so that the Lord can come and take her. 
that's what's happening right now. Now, you know, history will show this later on that this was the, the, the time that we were supposed to get ready with our lamps being trimmed and getting extra oil and, you know, everything that we've heard for so long. We've heard it so much that we have come to the place where we just mentally agree with these things instead of really in our heart discerning that this is the time. You know, everybody is waiting for something to happen and then they're they're not doing anything proactive. You know, you should not wait for something to happen to get ready for it. You get ready and you're always ready because you have faith. Faith is of the heart. Okay, so I want to go over this. The discussion here is is essentially when I was in heaven, I got to see this perception, this point of view that is beyond description, to tell you the truth. It's taken all these years so far just to, to start to write books. I still have over 50 different books that I have to write, but I'm, I'm uh, producing as many as I can right now with all the study guides and everything else that we do. And then the, the school, um, everything that we're doing is to help the people get ready for the second coming of Jesus. And also the most important part of this is that when you see believers mature, the one thing that I saw when believers mature is they, they start to intercede. And when they start to intercede, they start to evangelize. So the harvest has to come in. And there's no better time than right now for the harvest to come in. However, we've got to have the goods. So we have to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out people. And then after, after we, we ask them, we have to be willing to go out ourselves and do that. Now, God wants to confirm his word with signs and wonders falling. So there was going to be a lot of healings happening. There's going to be a lot of word of knowledge and a word of wisdom and prophecy. There's going to be a lot of tongues and interpretation. There's going to be gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, gifts of faith being uh, given to people. And people are going to start operating like, like uh, uh, never before. Okay, so we have to get people to the maturity level so that they become the people that go out and, and, and get the harvest in. That is what the Father wants. He wants people to come into the kingdom. And we're not waiting for Jesus just to come back. We're getting ready, but we're also telling people about Jesus too. So when I was in heaven, I saw this, this perspective that down here, we are supposed to be always thinking about the Holy Spirit, always thinking about Jesus, always thinking about the Father. And the, the Holy Spirit has been given to us, I think about the day of Pentecost every day. You want to know why? Because that is the day that the church started. When the Holy Spirit came in power, we received power from on high to become witnesses. We became one in, in spirit. Jesus talked about the, this oneness where we are one with the Father, one with Jesus, that he loves us just as much as uh, the Father loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. He has come. He's inside of us. He is talking to us about being cleansed and purged. And the Holy Spirit is in charge of your spiritual advancement, your spiritual maturity. He has the keys to take you into the spirit realm. The Holy Spirit can choose you and take you and show you things that you have never seen before. Do you know how many times just this week I've been shown things I've never seen before? And I've been to heaven. Do you realize that I understand prayer better right now than I did yesterday? Why? Because the Holy Spirit, He is the counselor. He's the one that has been given. The day of Pentecost came with wind and fire and utterance and drunkenness in the spirit. People were acting drunk because Peter stood up and said, these are not drunk as you suppose. How did people think they were drunk? Well, they were acting drunk. Okay, but they weren't drunk on alcohol. They were drunk on the Holy Spirit. So these four things, wind, fire, and utterance, and drunkenness in the spirit are all part of this end time move of God. And however, there's one more. They were all in one accord on that day. That is another manifestation of the Spirit. One accord. They were in unity. Now, the scriptures that talk about unity in as regards to prayer is this. It says that Jesus is in the midst of two or more that are gathered in his name. Okay. It says if any two 
agree on touching anything, it shall be done for them. Okay, so Satan is fighting unity. He's not allowing people to get together. He is trying to prevent people from meeting, from going to church, having Bible studies, getting together. He is doing that because the move of God has begun right now. It has begun. And the answer that he has in defense to keep people from going into this move is to keep them separated, keep them in fear. So now we have this process of, of spirit schools where we go on the internet and we broadcast spirit schools from our studios and we teach people about the move of God, about the things of God, and you can watch it in the privacy of your own home and still get the message and the power and the impartation. So God always has a provision for everything that Satan comes against you with. He will always have another move. Satan cannot outdo God. God always has another move reserved for himself. So he always wins. Every chess game that, that God plays, he wins. He always has another move. He'll never be in checkmate. Just remember that in your life. The answer to all these things is the crucified life. This is one of the key ingredients that Jesus gave me about the final move of God. He gave me eight specific ingredients that are really important for the end day move of God and the glory of God coming into to our meetings everywhere, all over the world. So the day, the perspective I saw was is that Enoch was able to disconnect himself from the world system of the day. You know, in the day that he lived, and you see this in Genesis uh, chapter 5, verse 24, and you also see this in, in Hebrews 11, where, where they talk about Enoch and his faith. And he pleased God because he, he, he walked with God and he feared God. And that is what we need to do. We need to fear God, walk with God, and set ourselves apart. When Enoch was on the earth, they were interbreeding. The people were interbreeding. There were hybrid races being, being um, propagated all over the world. It was so bad that at the end, God looked down and he repented that he had even made man. And everyone had interbreeded with, and they'd become hybrid to where they weren't redeemable because they weren't fully human anymore. And because of this, there were millions and millions of people on the earth. And you can look this up and they have all kinds of projections and scientists have uh, figured this out. So before the flood, there were only eight people that were not hybrids. That was Noah's family. They went on an ark and were preserved and then reseeded the earth. But then the, the, the seed of the serpent got back into the human race after the flood and it popped up again. And then David had to extinguish all the giants, all the, all the different, the Raphaim and the Nephilim, every, all day. He went after all of them and he, he actually trained 30 fighting men to help him. And eventually they ex extinguished all the uh, hybrid races from the earth. Okay. So now at this time, at the end of the age, Jesus said that it will be just like it was in the days of Noah before he comes. Okay. So what was happening in the days of Noah right before he came? I just told you. So get ready to start seeing these kind of things. If you start to see, uh, things being altered, uh, with genetics and, and uh, being offered all types of different things to, to make you live longer, uh, you know, genetic alterization and things like that. You, you have to be aware that there comes a point where God, God will have to judge these people for uh, messing with the human genetics because this is ungodly. And it's part of the plan of Satan to do this, to bring that, that serpent seed back into the human race again so that people who take this mark will not be redeemable. They, they will opt out of, of redemption by doing this because they're, they're, they're altered and they've taken a mark on them and it's forbidden in the Bible. Okay. But the crucified life will cause you to walk 
in holiness and separate from the world, which means there comes a point where you don't rely on people and the government any longer. You rely on God specifically and the body of Christ, the, the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the people that have decided to walk in this uh, crucified life. Now, I'm telling you the truth. You don't see how far off we are right now because you don't have the perspective. But when I was in heaven, I saw how far off we are from what God's original plan for us is. At this point, we should be on fire. We should be seeing all kinds of miracles and the churches should be full of people who want to seek God and hear from God. But there is a great falling away that is happening right now. And the message has been watered down. And God is raising up even children that will grow up and take this to the next generation without compromise. They won't need money. They won't need opinion. They won't need uh, validation. They, 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 could, they will not care that God's going to prosper them. God is going to cause them to be independent of, of the of people to where they're, they're not going to listen to their opinion. So if the adults in this generation within, within the next uh, so much time, I don't know exactly how long it'll be. It, it, hopefully it'll be a few years where God is waiting patiently for all of us adults to step into the crucified life, walk in holiness, walk in the fear of the Lord, just like Enoch did in a, in a time where there were, the earth was, was corrupt. This is what's happening now. When you look at the corruption that is in the world, we have been saved from that. We have escaped the corruption that is in the world caused by lust. Peter said this in 2 Peter chapter 1, that the precious promises that we've been given in the Word of God have caused us to be partakers of the divine nature and that we have escaped the corruption that's in the world. This is right now. I don't know how else to be more plain to you than that. I don't know if I should uh, should get up and yell or or dance around to get your attention to show you that I really mean this. But I am telling you, there has never been a time in history that is more important than this right now. Getting this message out that we are to walk in the fear of the Lord. We are to love and, and honor God and, and know that he's a holy God and that Enoch did this. He went about the, the different cities pronouncing the judgment that was coming. He was a prophet. According to what, what scripture says, Enoch was a prophet and that, that he is, he had visions of the end times. And Jude talks about this. Uh, there's different books in the Bible. You know, the uh, people in the, in the, in the, uh, even Jesus, the, he knew, he knew, um, the book of Enoch. He knew all these different things that I'm talking about. Jude um, quotes the book of Enoch. Uh, Jesus quoted the, the book of Enoch, the, the, the phrase weeping and gnashing of teeth that Jesus referred to. That is only in the book of Enoch, that phrase. Okay, so uh, getting back into this idea of, of the prophets and uh, the apostles, they, they walked in this crucified life. They carried their cross, the cross of Jesus. They they consider not their own life. When I was in that timeless realm with Jesus and I could see the mystery of the ages, the, the secrets uh, of, 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 of what God has for us, it had nothing to do with time. It had nothing to do with space, distance. This is all stuff that, is a, that we're accustomed to down here. The crucified life is the only way that we can enter into the supernatural. It's the only way. It's the only way to enter into the perfect will of God. There's, there's no other way. If you don't deny yourself and deny your flesh and turn away from your own thinking and let your mind and your will and your emotions be transformed by the word of God, uh, you cannot walk with God. You have to adhere to what God has said. He has set boundaries and, and perimeters. He's, he's not doing this just to restrict you and to be mean. He's doing this because he loves us and because he knows that Satan is going to try to appeal to our flesh and to our mind, to try to get us to reason. The, the, the Lord has already proclaimed that he is the only way. 
He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me, through me. And that's in John 14, 6. If, if you knew what it was like to die and, and know that you were going to heaven and then be sent back and to give, give people a, a perspective, a heavenly perspective, if you understood what I, what I see, the contrast between the, the real realm and the, the future and being in the future, being sent back and having to speak to a generation who really has, has no idea about eternal things because they, they haven't had a glimpse of it. If you knew what that was like, you would, tr- you would totally understand me why I'm doing this, why I, I took my own money and started Warrior Notes. What me and my wife worked extra just to start Warrior Notes. We, we were going to, we were going to do it, uh, without having established a ministry. We were just doing it, but the Lord asked us to do all this. And we, we are willing to do whatever the Lord asks us to do to get this perspective from eternity out there to the people. People that don't know Jesus, that will know Jesus because we've been obedient to do what we've asked to do. But see, that takes a crucified life. In other words, you've got to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. That is not such a popular message anymore because uh, you, you hear a lot of people like, you just got to be yourself and, you know, God loves you the way you are. And uh, you hear all these messages like, uh, you know, just hold on until I come. And you, 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 you get a corrupt view of, of the eternity. Eternity is this. God so loved the world, not just you. He loved the world that he gave his only son. And then he said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out people to the harvest. For the harvest is white and ready. And the workers need to go out. So here, here in this realm right now, I saw eternity. From God's perspective, He wants the whole world saved. He wants everyone to come in. He doesn't want to lose anybody. And He loves you. He loves me. But He so loved the world that He gave His only Son. So He's invested a lot. Now, Jesus said, if you want to have anything to do with me, you've got to drink my blood and eat my flesh. So the crucified life has to do with the communion table. It has to do with walking, not according to your own desires, but according to God's desires. And what does the word of God say? The, the, the Lord says, if you leave, whatever you leave, for my sake, houses, family, whatever, he said, I will reward you in this life, houses and family and people, and with it, persecutions. So God promised us that if we don't seek uh, after the things of the world, we seek after the kingdom, that all the other things we need and want will be given unto us. So we have the ability to see all our desires fulfilled if we don't stare at the, them. We don't stare at the things. We stare at Jesus. And Jesus is saying, my father loves the world and he wants no one to perish. So the crucified life, will cause us to finish up and wrap up our assignment for this generation. That's what I want to do. So now you understand me a little better because my perspective is, is that I need to pray in tongues as much as I can every day. I need to meditate on the Word of God as much as I can every day. And then I need to fast. I need to do whatever it takes to give the devil a headache. I need, but then I need to go out and I need to come to the studios and do spirit schools uh, film for my classes. I need to write books and write study guides and do CDs and DVDs. And I need to go and do uh, TV shows in, in different places that the Lord has assigned me to. I need to meet with my, 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 uh, people above me that I counsel my spiritual parents. I need to glean as much as I can from the previous generation who are still alive on this earth. But the impartation must, and the handoff must take place. Okay, so I don't just pray and fast and meditate. Then I, I get in my car, I leave my house, and I go and I start to manifest what God is doing. See, that's the crucified life. I do all the spiritual things, but part of being spiritual is manifestation. So you manifest what the Spirit is doing and saying. You manifest it in the flesh, 
by by speaking, by acting, and writing, uh, producing whatever it is that God has given you as a gift. You know, you you if you're an artist, you need to you need to go and do your artist thing with the power and the anointing of God today. If you're if you're supposed to write, if you're a mom and you you're anointed as a mom, then you need to be that mom to those children because those children. They, I, I suspect that they are the ones that will be the final generation. They have the baton that will wrap it up. You know, so we need to invest in our children. We need to invest everywhere we go. I, I do the best I can to invest in children because that generation, they're all called to the ministry. Just so you know, the final generation on earth will be all anointed ministers. They will be prophetic. They will speak the word of God with fire. I'm just telling you, I've already seen this. So I have sent back and the crucified life is coming back and it be very popular. The road, the way that Jesus talks about, he is the way, the truth of life. But he also said that way is narrow and that few find it. That's in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. I could see people's futures, and I, I meet people all the time, I can see their futures, but the Lord doesn't tell me to say anything to them. He said, just keep teaching, keep keep uh, educating people. But there's a lot of people that have it a hard time down here on the earth. It's not easy down here, but it's doable if you live the crucified life. The most important thing uh, to tell you is, this, is that the, the crucified life will cost you something but it is totally worth it. It's totally going to put you in a place where your reward is so great. Uh, the people of this world, if you're walking in the crucified life, uh, you're going to be rejected by the world. You know, the things that you get criticized for, you know, people have no idea. They, the things that I do in secret, you know, the people will slam me. They don't even know what they're saying. And I'm doing stuff in secret that's absolutely the opposite. I'm giving up uh, things that I want and need so that other people could have. And yet people will slam you. They'll reject you. They'll say terrible things about you. And the whole time in secret, you're doing way more. Well, see, your reward is great in heaven. People don't know. I mean, I do stuff and my right hand doesn't know what my left hand's doing. There is a, a act of faith where... The, 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 the devils get very, very nervous because you're doing stuff in secret and nobody knows about it. So the devils will get people to lie about you. Um, it just just get, get ready for the crucified life. It's rewarding, but the devils know the power of you walking in that. You're going to walk in the spirit. There's, there's angels. Right now, the angels are all, all on call. They, they are assigned to you, but they are ready to act as soon as you do something in faith, as soon as you hear from God and you are obedient. So the, the, you know, I, I think that people spend a lot of time, to, you know, building up their faith. They want to build up their faith. How do I get more faith? But Jesus said, if you just had a faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea. Okay. What did he just say? Well, a mustard seed is very small, but you know, those mustard plants, some of them get to be 15 feet tall off of a small seed. So you have to plant it. So faith without the action is dead, according to scripture anyway. If, I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, but God has initiated your faith by giving you the word. You need to plant it. So what you do is, is you have to act on it. So angels are are on standby and they are waiting to jump in and help you when you start to act out what God has told you to do. So I'm just being honest with you, it's not a popular message either, but faith is more obedience than, than you would ever wanna admit. I saw that real faith is like what Enoch did. He went against the grain of the day 
and he, you know, the, the, he was going across people's paths. He wasn't walking with people. He, he was going in a different direction all the time because God was leading him as a prophet. He was announcing judgment for the, for humanity at the time that he lived where they were being judged. The, the, the flood was coming and he was sent to all the cities to warn people that the judgment was coming because God is a righteous God. He was announcing to them that they were going to be judged. This is why Jonah was so surprised when he went to Nineveh. He didn't expect them to repent. He figured that that they it was just like Enoch, that he was just going to announce the judgment. And then he was upset when they turned because they were such terrible, vile people. And yet the people of Nineveh turned back to God and repented. And so it is today with us, if we activate through faith uh, are in action then the angels start to move start to get things done so your provision is going to come supernaturally your job everything about you your health everything is going to come into line with what god has for you there is this walk with god and it's 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 a crucified life okay if you decide to lose your life for christ's sake you're going to gain everything. This is in Matthew 10, 39. You see, each one of your days was written in a book before one of them came to pass in Psalms 139, 16. So this does not mean that you're going to die physically when you decide you're going to lose your life for Christ's sake, and then you're going to gain everything. You're, you're still living. You're supposed to offer your body as a living sacrifice as we talked about in a previous session you're supposed to offer your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god this is what paul said in romans chapter 12. okay jesus said if you have any part of me then pick up your cross deny yourself and follow me and that we would mention this in in matthew 16 24. so jesus said this before he even died on a cross so he was telling his disciples to pick up their cross before he even died in one. And remember that the Spirit of God is the one who is helping you to walk in this power, in this crucified life. So uh, fire is going to start burning as, as you start to initiate this process of crucified life in your, in, in your daily uh, walk with God. As soon as you start to do this, the angels are going to be activated, and then fire is going to start to burn. You're going to feel fire. Uh, I can feel it right now. It's being imparted to you as I'm talking. The fire of God is starting to consume you. It's a spiritual thing, but it'll start affecting your mind, your will, and your emotions. It'll start to affect your body, and you're going to be healed. You're going to be set free by the Holy Fire. John 4.24 says this, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So forgiveness is not a system that we do to please God. The spirit of God is bringing us to God because God is a spirit. And we offer ourselves, our bodies up, we offer our will up, but our spirit is forgiven. You know, our spirit is born again, a new creature, old things have passed away, and behold, everything has become new. We know that religion and all the systems of religion are in vain. You, you live and you walk by faith. So, your spirit right now is ignited and it has to work out into your soul, into your mind, will, and emotions, and into your body. So Jesus is not a religion. He's not someone that you do certain things for and you pay him like honor by doing certain things. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He is everything to us as Christians. So it's not a system. So if Jesus said, if you believe in me and you deny yourself, he said, he said, your sins are forgiven. If you believe in the blood, then you are forgiven. That's it. But it's a spiritual thing that has to happen first inside your heart. Then you have to tell your soul, which your mind, will, and emotions that you're forgiven. You have to enforce that because your mind is going to try to reason it out. 
While you're here, you should be telling everybody about forgiveness on the earth. You should be telling everybody about the way, the truth, and life. You should be uh, announcing it, that people need to come in to Jesus and adhere to what he has said. And that is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. People need to know that. And when God moves, he moves by his spirit. So you have the spiritual and you have the physical. The crucified life causes the spiritual to invade the physical. It invades the psychological realm as well in your mind. So when, when I looked into Jesus's eyes, I saw that I could die for him. I saw that he was worth dying for. I saw that I could do all things through him who gives me strength. I saw all these things. I saw that it was well worth living my life for him. And I saw that, that no one would reject him if they really knew him. When I looked into his eyes, I saw such love and compassion that, that had uh, bought humanity back that I thought no one that really knew him would ever reject him. No one would do the things that they did to him while he was on the earth. The angels that are on the earth right now, they're wanting you to move into the, your next step. So don't reject it. Don't hesitate. Let the Spirit of God start to initiate. So you start to talk right now. I decided I'm going to walk a crucified life. I'm going to leave what I want, and I'm going to do what God wants. So Lord, start to dictate and tell me what it is. Show me the desires of my heart. I want the desires of my heart. Whatever you placed in there, that's what I want. And as you start to talk to, uh, about that, the angels around you will start to engage you. They're going to they're not going to be waiting anymore. They're going to be activated. God is saying if you want to move he said, then we can walk with, the, with you and we're going to send the angels to walk with you. That's what he's saying. He's going to help you. He's going to explain to you your purpose and in your, in, in your plan, uh, the plans that he has for you. Your plan is written in heaven because God already wrote it, signed it, and then you were born into this earth. There are so many people that, that are going to hell. They don't need to go to hell that they've been bought by the blood of Jesus. This is, this is the truth. Jesus considered me a friend of his. He talked to me as though I was part, a partner in what he was doing on this earth. And because I, I felt so accepted and loved by him, I did not want to come back to the earth because I was validated by God himself. And Jesus has the power to to what to do whatever he wants he he could speak something right now and it wouldn't even matter what you thought it wouldn't even matter what you thought about it if he says this is the way it's going to be for kevin then that's the way it's going to be that's the jesus i met if he decides that he wants something for you if 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 he if he says it that's it so i'm just going to agree with him i'm going to get out of the way and just be in agreement with him because he could change your life by one spoken word over you. He can sing over you songs of deliverance and you're going to be delivered. That's the power of the crucified life. Is it, is it, I'm not going to move unless he tells me to move because of that he's, he's thinking right now, what can I do? He, they, they have pleased me so much. What can I do to bless them? And he starts to do things that surprise you. He'll start to favor you and it'll be, it'll, it'll just, It'll just be a surprise. I, I, I have this happen almost every day. And it's because I don't want to do my own thing. I don't need to do my own thing. I don't want you to have to do your own thing. You know, I want you to hear from heaven, the, from the command center of heaven. I want you to hear the briefings that are being uh, told to the angels about you and the plans that God has for you. They're so powerful. He has plans for you to succeed and to prosper. That's his plan for you. And um, the, the demonic spirits know this, that if you get hooked up through the crucified life, if you get hooked up with what God's path is by denying yourself and listening to what the spirit is saying, the angels are all around you, walking with you, and you're having fellowship with God as a friend. This is all going to happen. It's not going to, it's not going to take very long. By the end of this weekend, you're going to be walking in this reality. 
you know, it, it's time. I, I can't wait any longer to release this message. And of course, God has already started the move. It started three years ago, but it, this, this January, it really, really started to be seen because people started to engage God. And then, then, um, Satan moved to try to stop this, uh, glorious move of God by isolating people with, with a, a foul disease that he invented. Satan invented a foul disease to, to keep people apart so that they wouldn't be in unity and they wouldn't meet and, and minister as the body should minister. And so he's lost again. He's, he's overplayed his hand and now he's on the run and he's running out of time. So the body of Christ needs to rise up right now and put to use the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus uh, against these demonic spirits and, and tell disease to stop spreading, uh, take authority and, and, essentially like acknowledge the blood of Jesus on the doorposts of your house everywhere you go prevent the the demons from from doing their work by using the name of Jesus and living the crucified life i'm just being honest with you i saw that demons have no power over a person who walks not according to the flesh but according to the spirit who lives a crucified life you you uh, let the Holy Spirit make borders in your life. You make the boundaries, and you don't let anything violate those. You just tell the Lord that you're going to honor the boundaries that the Spirit has set, the Spirit of God. If a demon tries to violate that through a person or a situation, you go right to God and say, you know, this wasn't the orders. This was not what we agreed to, and I'm bringing down every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. I'm bringing it into captivity right now. And this is a trespasser. This demon has to go in Jesus' name. And you bring it down. You bring down, that's your spiritual warfare. Anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Um, we create a, an environment of, of heavenly, um, of, of a heavenly atmosphere. It just takes uh, five to 10 minutes of your time of just meditating and worshiping and speaking by in the spirit praying in tongues and you tell the you tell the devil that he cannot have you he tell the devil that he can't have your future you tell the devil he can't have your body you or your mind you you tell those evil spirits they have to go you just give god 10 minutes a day and you start out there and before you know it it's an hour before you know it it's 3 hours and at three hours, you can change history. Three hours of meditation and prayer and pray, praying in the spirit, building yourself up a day. You know, some of you might not think that's possible. Well, I didn't either. I couldn't even pray 10 minutes in tongues. And I had a breakthrough. And then it got to where it was overthrow. At overthrow, it was three hours. And, and um, now it's nothing for me to pray, pray three to four times more than that a day. Sometimes I pray uh, uh, eight, 12 hours a day in tongues, you know, and I still do everything else I'm supposed to do. You can do this. You, you crucify your flesh. You walk not according to the desires of the flesh. You deny yourself and you tell the demons to let you go. When you do that, when you, when you do that, they are going to back off. They're afraid of you. Did you know that? They're afraid of you. Um, the devil knows that you know that he's defeated. You have to be fully convinced. Even, even uh, animals, they know if you're afraid or if, you, if you're not. They, they know they can feel it. So that's the way the demons are. So you make your borders. You, you make sure that you tell the devil to back off and you tell him where you're, where you're going, what you're going to do. David, when he ran to Goliath, um, he said, I'm going to feed you to the birds today. Uh, you, you, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take your head off. He told him as he's going to him, this is what I'm going to do to you today. And, um, David had that faith in God because he meditated. He spent time alone. He was out in the wilderness with, with his, uh, sheep. And that is that is a, a solitary place and we need at least 10 minutes and then try to get to an hour as fast as you can. Okay. So the enemy, 
The enemy doesn't want people to grasp God's goodness. So he tries to make people think, Satan is trying to make people think that God is doing all these terrible things, and he's not at all. And if you, if you really crucified your flesh and you studied the word of God and you meditate, I'm telling you, this happened to me. I'm, I've been so humbled since I've crucified my flesh and I've, I've meditated on God's word. I saw how good he is that I've had to repent. I've had to repent because I thought things that were wrong. And when I met Jesus and I was sent back, one of the things I said to Jesus, I said, Jesus, you're so misrepresented on the earth. You, 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 you're so good, and you're, the Father is so good, and that's the secret. That's the secret is that God doesn't defend himself. I mean, I was so surprised at how many people think that God's doing certain things down here, and he's not, and that God is in control of this earth. He's not in control of this earth. You know, it's a mess, and it's obvious that he's not in control. He gave the keys to the church. He gave the keys to the believer. He gave us his name. He gave us authority as an ambassador. We're to do the works of Jesus and do greater works. It's no longer God in heaven and Jesus doing it. We are doing it now. Jesus is at the right hand of God and he's seated. And he is seated until he comes back for us. We are his body on the earth. We are to walk in the power of the resurrection. The only way that we can walk in the power of the resurrection is we have to, to walk in the death that he walked in. We have to experience death in order to experience resurrection. Now, I know you're getting this. The, the power of God is so strong that I'm, I'm having a hard time even sitting here. I'm not even I'm not able to stand by the power of God, but now it's gone to a place where the heavy glory has come in. So the, the holy fire is introduced when we have yielded to the process of purification, when we've yielded to the process of separation and sanctification. You know, we need to release the fire into our life. We, we just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for releasing the fire in our lives right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. The holy fire from the altar in your throne right now is being transferred right now through this spirit skull. And I pronounce that the holy fire is moving out and is able to burn up everything that's not of you, Father, and all the people's lives all over the world right now, all the thousands that are watching in the name of Jesus, holy fire imparted in the name of Jesus right now. And, and the whole the whole atmosphere shifts and the devils have to leave when the holy fire shows up because you have been set apart. The devil doesn't want anything to do with you because God owns you and he is afraid. Satan is afraid of holy fire. He is, he is the one that used to walk on those sapphire stones on Mount Zion. And the, that, that was the holy mountain of God. And you can see this in Ezekiel. We've talked about this, Ezekiel 28. Verses 12 through 19, it talks about all this. He does not want you to understand holiness because he knows how powerful it is because he used to walk in it. Hillel walked in this and he became Lucifer when he fell. And he understands that, that walking in holiness and separation in the fire, he's, he, he, you know, you can't touch a person like that. He knows that. That's why he fights holiness. That's why he fights Christians so that they don't walk in the crucified life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31 and 32, it says, For as we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the Lord. Now, this verse is in the New Testament. It's written to Christians, just so you know. We need to judge ourselves so that we won't be judged. This is what Paul is saying. He said, if you judge yourself, you're not going to be judged. He said, you're being chastened by the Lord. And be, it's the word there is discipline. So that we are not condemned with the world. Now think about what is being said there. That's a separation. That's why Paul said, come ye out from among the world and be separate. 
That is what's being talked about here. If we judge ourselves, in other words, we say, you know what? I'm not going to do what I'm doing anymore because I'm judging myself and saying that this is not productive and this is not God's will for my life. So I'm not going to do this anymore. This is not right. When you read the Word of God and you see something in there and it draws a boundary, this is the crucified life. You know, I'm not going to do this anymore because it says right here. And how many times I've said this, Lord, I never saw that in your word. I've never seen. How many times have I read that in the Bible? And I never saw that. It's because the Holy Spirit is our counselor. And he's saying, listen, here is the truth. And then right away, we should judge ourselves and say, you know what? Um, I'm going to change what I'm doing because of this. I don't want, I don't want um, to be judged by the world or judged with the world. And I, I, I want to tell you this, there's a separation coming too. And I know this is a, just another a very, very unpopular thing, but you, you know that there are sheeps and there are goats, and you know that there are tares and there is wheat. And there comes a time where they're separated. Now, it's everything seems okay until um, the angels come and start separating and all of a sudden, you can't tell the difference. Uh, you can't tell the difference between wheats and tares. And, and uh, the whole idea there is just that there is something going on with a mixture. And uh, people don't seem to understand all the parables that Jesus was given to people. But you have to remember that the people back then in Jesus' day had like a third grade education. So, you know, if it's too complicated, it's not God because Jesus was making it very uncomplicated. But it has to do with revelation. It has to do with the, the Spirit giving you the understanding. But if you understand these parables, he, God's given you the deep mysteries of the kingdom through these parables. You have to, to separate yourself and judge yourself or you're going to be judged. The tares were, were taken out of the wheat at harvest time, and they were thrown into the fire. And it's the same with the, the virgins. There were 10 virgins. They were all virgins waiting for the wedding, but five of them were not ready. Uh, you know, you don't have to think through that too hard because Jesus was talking to people that had a third grade education or less. Okay, because of that, then, you know, just make sure you're ready. Make sure you get oil. Make sure that you trim your lamp. Make sure that you're always ready. Make sure that you're not a, a fake fake wheat, that you're real wheat, you know, not tares, which is just a weed that looks like wheat. You you just make sure you judge yourself. The same with with um, the goats and the, and, the, and the sheep, the lambs. You know, you're a lamb. You know, you are a child of God. Yeah, a goat resists a goat is very strong-willed. If you try to grab a goat, they'll go the opposite direction you want them to go. You can't, you can't lead a goat. You got to drive a goat. You got to push them in the direction. You got to make them do what you want them to do. With the sheep, they they follow you because they hear the voice of their good shepherd and they listen to them. They they know the voice of their of their shepherd. Okay, goats, they have to be driven. Okay, so you get the point. Don't overcomplicate it. Make sure that the Word of God judges you and that you're disciplined, that the Lord chastens you because He wants you to not be judged with the world. Paul said that this could happen to Christians, that they could be judged with the world. This is, this is not going to happen overnight, but you need to submit to the discipline of God and, and watch that your mouth is not... Uh, uh, speaking against your your fellow brother and you know, the the body of Christ, you know you teach people to judge themselves. You don't judge people. You discern, like I discern all the time. Um, I I I can see through everything. You know, that's not a fun thing to have. You know, everybody wants to be able to have the discernment that's off the charts. But then you get it, and you're like, um, what did I just ask for? Because now you can see. If people are lying to you, you can see their agenda. You know exactly what's going on. You know when people are using you. You know you know that they're stealing from you. You know you know all these things. I mean, you know, there's a big responsibility in walking with the Lord. But if you judge yourself, you're not going to be judged because God has allowed you 
to do it yourself. He has allowed the Christian to judge himself so that you don't have to be judged by the world. Okay, so you ask for discernment, but just remember that when you see stuff and you discern something in someone else, you have to pray for them. But God might not have you do anything about it, which is is a, is the a, a case with me most of the time. I just pray for people, but I I see things that that are years away. That if they don't stop or they don't uh, change things, they're going to end up they're going to end up uh, uh, out of the race. I've watched this happen with with many people, uh, you know. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And He said, Just pray for them that they judge themselves. Uh, I hope you're hearing this, but see, if a crucified life will cause you to do that. You're, you're, this is not the feel good gospel message. You know, this is not a feel good gospel message. This is the life. Jesus said, if you want life, he said, you got to give it up. He said, if you seek life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you're going to gain it. He's talking about the crucified life. He's not talking about killing yourself. He's, you know, physically, he's talking about, walking away from your own desires and letting the holy fire have its way in you. Satan hates this message because he knows that immediately he's not going to be able to in any way manipulate you. He's not going to be able to control you. If you hear this message, that's why I'm doing this this weekend. That's why we're in the in the afternoon at 2 p.m. This is why we're doing this. It's because the devil he will not be able to control you any longer. He will not be able to manipulate you. You're going to be completely free to walk in the Spirit. There is only one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. We can go directly to the Holy of Holies ourselves. A new and living way has been given to us through the blood of Jesus. And this is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 25. And then also the mediator between God and man who is Jesus. That's in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. No one, no one can tell you that you can't go into the Holy of Holies. No one can, can stop you. You go into the Holy of Holies, and when you're there, it's a holy place. You stay in that environment very long and you're going to start acting holy. You're going to be holy as God is holy. There, there is a place. I mean, the secret place, that's a holy place. You know, when I was in the throne room, it's very holy, very holy. The floor is holy. The floor is sapphire, blue sapphire with white flames coming out of it. It's the most amazing thing. Everything is holy. So you better get used to it, but you judge yourself. The fire comes in, that beautiful, cleansing, holy fire, and we are able to walk in places that we couldn't walk in before because the, the flesh is being taken care of. Okay, um, Jesus' heart for everyone is to walk in the revelation of who he is and what he has done. So we need a revelation that he was in heaven in, in the, the beauty of holiness, in 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 the riches of heaven, in the, the glorious inheritance that's there. And he came and became a servant for us. And he died. He suffered and died when he didn't have to. He did it be because he, he knew the Father wanted to buy back humanity. So he, he became poor. He became um, a human being and walked among us and showed us how to do this right. And then was crucified Went, went to hell for three days and then went to heaven and seated at the right hand of God. So he was in the belly of the earth for three days and then went to heaven. And now he's seated at the right hand of God, waiting for his enemies to become his footstool. He's completed this work. Jesus wants us to know what he's done for us. He wants us to see that he bought everything back. We, we have no lack any longer. He became poor so that we don't have to be poor. He is the one that forgave us, got us forgiveness of sins so that we don't have to feel guilty anymore for our past. So when does that happen? When, when, what day do you wake up when you're not, you're not thinking about your past anymore? You're not thinking about the, 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 the guilt of something you've done in the past. You know, either you're forgiven or you're not, but, you know, quickly go and, and reconfirm to God that you are forgiven. Everything is hidden 
by the blood of Jesus, you're cleansed. Okay, that that's, has to be resolved. So these things, Paul continually in his writings was talking about all these issues that believers have. He was, he was talking to the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Ephesians, the Colossians, the Philippians. He, he was saying these words in these letters to these, to these congregants, these people in these churches. And he, he, he was, he was writing to them, but now he's writing to us. And so you have to eat these things every day. And when you do, it'll start to, to cause you to be rerouted in your thinking so that you, you see, I'm forgiven. I'm in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. I'm seated with him in the heavenly realms. And then you start to see, I'm, I'm, um, I'm completely forgiven of all my past sins. I'm, I, I actually been given all things through Christ. I take hold of those things which Christ has taken hold of for me. I, um, I, I'm always triumphing. God causes me to triumph always in Christ Jesus. It's a, it's a great privilege for us to live in this time when we're seeing the power of the Holy Spirit move like he has never done before, but there is that separation. There is a separation coming, and it's already starting. And so this weekend, I just want to encourage you that that you are to yield to the holy fire. You are to yield to the process of purification. You're also to deny your flesh, and you're supposed to let the Holy Spirit uh, cause you to see revelation and then judge yourself so that you won't be judged with the world. In uh, Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, I want to get into this for a little bit. It says, Behold, I send a messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? He is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And silver is always representative of salvation. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Okay, so right now Malachi is prophetically talking about the coming of Jesus and how he came into his temple and that he was a refiner's fire, a purifier. He was one who is, is, is causing um, the people to actually offer themselves up as an offering in righteousness, it says. So that's what we do. We offer ourselves up in righteousness because he has purified us and cleansed us. So there is this righteousness that comes from us because of the purification process according to the scripture. So Mal Malachi saw the Lord Jesus as being the refiner's fire and that that it shipped, shifted the perception and people began to change to where the Levitical priesthood was purified, and then people offered up offerings to God in righteousness. That's because they judged themselves. That's because, um, you, know, you know, Malachi's talking about today. He's talking about what's happening right now. There are many decisions that you need to make this weekend. And I know this is so important. You know, I wasn't sent back to fail. I wasn't sent back to not see you mature. I wasn't sent back... Uh, to not see that you delivered from any kind of demonic activity, any kind of strongholds, any kind of curse. I was sent back to break the curses, to preach the gospel, to give the good news to people, and to see the body of Christ mature, and to show them that they are to stay on the track. And whatever it is that God has spoken to you, it's time right now to do that. Whatever He is saying to you, it's time to start to formulate it. Even if this weekend you just get out a sheet of paper and start to write out and formulate what's in your spirit about what God has called you to do. Just write out a drawing. If you can't write it out specifically, just put something down on paper and pray over it. I do that all the time. I go th through our headquarters and pray over our, our headquarters because 
expansions coming because there's all kinds of plans that God has for us. And I pray those things out. I write stuff on paper. I'm giving uh, uh, drawings to contractors. Um, I'm telling our employees the direction that the Lord is leading us in. I'm constantly writing down what it is that God is saying to me all the time. I'm always saying what God is saying to me. Now, in the decisions that you make this weekend, it's really starting to direct your future. If you don't direct your future, you're not, you're not going to get to where you're supposed to be. You have to start in that direction now in order to get there. You know, when I take off in an airplane, I mean, there might be some um, delays and turns in the airspace when I depart. I might even be heading in an opposite direction just to stay away from other traffic, other airplanes in the area. But there's going to come this time where I'm going to have to make my turn toward my destination. And I wait for that. I wait for the assignment uh, to that direction that I already know in my heart, in my mind, what direction, what, what exact heading I have to go to. I also know what the best altitude is for, for where I'm going. Um, be, because of this, you know, I know eventually that I'll be directed toward my destination. You see, writing things down, praying over things. I walk through the, uh, the building, through the, the headquarters, through the different rooms. I pray over individuals constantly all the time. Uh, asking God to give them wisdom on, on helping me to go in the direction I need to go. You know, you need to do this. You need to pray over your business. You need to pray over your children, your family. You need to, uh, to pray over the vision that God has given you. What has he spoken to you about these end times that you're supposed to be doing? This process of this weekend of hearing this word in this spirit school is so that you write down your vision and that you allow the Lord um, to, to have full access to implementing that in your life. I'm telling you, this is, this is the weekend that this happens. This is the time. This is when the devil has overplayed his hand. He has overplayed his hand. This is the time you hit him really hard. You hit him really hard with vision. You, you, you start to let God implement the vision and let him judge you. Let God judge you. Let God show you and discern. And I, I, I do this all. He chastens me. He actually discerns and judges. I judge myself. He judges me. He tells me, okay, Kevin, you're going to do it this way. That's a judgment. He says, you're going to go in this direction. That's a judgment. He's saying, this is the way it's going to be. I'm supposed to be obedient. I, I'm, I'm telling you, the, the Jesus that I met is different than the Jesus that people talk about sometimes. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that Jesus, he is not the kind of person that is, is going to make you feel good in your sin. He's not going to make you feel comfortable if you're not supposed to feel comfortable about what you're doing. He's going to tell you, you're, you're, you need to come in line with what I have for you. And he's going to say things that are going to judge you and what you're doing. So if you don't, if you judge yourself, you won't be judged. But he says things to me to bring correction. And I have to be instantly obedient to that. So don't delay is, is my point. Don't delay this process of holy fire in your life. Let it happen this weekend. Let God cause you to get to a place where you can make the right decisions on what you need to do. But you have to write out what's in your heart. You write out the vision. Because like I said, you might have be going in an in opposite direction of where you're heading, go, eventually going. But it's a process, just like it is with air traffic control. You know, I, I, I get a heading that's going in the opposite direction, but eventually I know they're turning me because they know where I'm going. God knows where you're going. And he's going to get you there. But the process that he's going to take you through is discipline. He's going to tell you things to do. You're going to have to deny yourself and you're going to have to obey him. And this is not an easy process. It's not a popular message. And I, I know, I, I know that people need to take this medicine from the word of God. They need this. They need discipline. They, they need, they need to hear from God, but God might say something to you that you didn't want to hear. You have to be willing to obey. God is, is, is doing this because he wants you to get to your future because he wrote your future. And this process is 
crucifying the flesh. It's causing your will to submit to God's will. And, and uh, you know, this has become the popular message. Jesus said it's going to be popular again, crucified life, um, li- listening to your spirit, not your head. It's going to become popular again. Um, if you cross the borders that God has already established and you violate that, the spirit's going to alert you and you need to just go ahead and make that correction. Even if you don't understand what's going on, your spirit could alert you there's something wrong. So then you need to go to prayer and submit to prayer and remember writing down what God has already told you and staying on track with what God has, has told you. Okay. If, if you, have been in a purifying process for a while do do not get discouraged because it's going to, to be worth it but you'll be alone at times and i i have to tell you that that god will cause you to be alone and feel alone at times because he is wanting you to rely on him and don't get discouraged just sit in the presence of the holy spirit and drink Uh, of him just drink of the river of life just let the holy spirit come down and bring healing to your heart Uh, let let it still your mind let let healing begin you know god wants to heal you in the desert he wants you to be completely whole you don't have to live in that hurt any longer and this is part of the process of holy fire as well people are depending upon um other others to give them words you know the prophets um, you know, people go to get a word from God, but see, God says, no, I want you to go to your secret place and I want to give you a word. He, Jesus wants to talk to you. The Father wants to commune with you. And we've gotten to this place where we're relying too much on, on prophets and they're not hearing from God accurately as well. So they're misleading people. This is all part of a process of correction. So you get in the secret place, you hear from God, let God talk to you. And then if a prophet calls you out and confirms what God has already told you, then that is the fulfillment of what what God has instituted in the body of Christ through the prophetic ministry. The prophet confirms what God is already saying to you. He's not going to tell you something new. God is going to talk to you. That is New Testament. See, it's not Old Testament prophets where the prophet goes and says, thus saith the Lord, and everybody thinks it's brand new. This is not the New Testament prophet. The New Testament prophet is to confirm. He is to build up the body of Christ and give the word of of the Lord that is confirming and building up. That's the the New Testament prophet. Uh, The Lord told me we're depending too much on the prophetic mantle and because of that people are being led astray they're being misled and the body of christ is not maturing because the lord's ultimate goal is for you to mature and have a relationship where you hear from your heavenly father for yourself and that's what jesus died for was for the relationship that you can hear god's voice this is part of that process is this the holy fire and the and submitting to the refiner's fire. Okay, in in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Okay, so what does exceedingly above mean to you? He's able to do exceedingly above. Even what we can ask or think. Well, have you... Have you ever considered that you haven't thought yet of the things that God wants to do for you? That that no matter how much you've imagined something, that it was it's something that He has is greater than even that. You know, have you ever considered this? Well, I have been shown this when I was on the other side. I saw that people are living so below what they have been given through Christ Jesus. And because of the lack of teaching about the crucified life and the holy fire, people are not able to enter into the process of being revealed these greater things that are exceedingly above. I know that my father has things planned for me personally that I have never come to my mind yet. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit nudging me and telling me, I wouldn't even know to ask for them. That's how exceedingly above it is. 
So with you, you might want to consider that no matter what you're praying, you're not asking for enough. You have to go beyond your capabilities of your mind by entering into this spirit, which is through the crucified life and the purifying fire, will allow you to enter into this spirit. And then the spirit will dictate what you pray for. He will show you things to come that are beyond what you have ever thought. You are wanting the money for your rent. And Jesus wants to talk to you about giving you a house, your own house, and you're trying to find the rent for an apartment. This is the kind of thing you just want enough money to live another month. Jesus wants you to own a company to help support the gospel message going all over the world. But you just want extra hours at work to make up for what you lack in paying your bills. You see, Jesus wants you to think beyond your mind. That is through the Holy Spirit. We cannot do this unless we submit to the Holy Fire until we allow the purifying process to judge us and for us to judge ourselves after we receive revelation of the Word of God. Okay, uh, the rich man had no revelation. He depended on his wealth. In Matthew 19, 21, he was told to sell everything he has and give it to the poor. Jesus said that there was a great treasure in heaven and that he would need to come and follow him after leaving everything. This is a test that the person did not pass. He was sad. He said he, he walked away sad because he had great wealth. Okay, but Jesus was the pearl of great price. Jesus knew that if he gave everything up, he was going to get much more back. He knew that, but he had to pass his test. And Jesus was putting him to the wall, just like he does with all of us. He puts us in a situation where there's no wiggle room left, and we have to release our future to him. We have to release our finances to him, our health. We have to start trusting him in every area of our life. And we're being programmed by the world system to not do that. But Jesus met somebody who understood who he was, and it was a centurion. That centurion had the revelation of who Jesus was. So when Jesus was like so willing to go to his house and lay hands on him, on, on the, the sick there and, and, and answer what the centurion was asking, the centurion said, oh, no, no, no. He said, I, I know who you are. You're a great a great, the great Messiah, you have authority. You don't have to come to my house. You could just say the word and it'll be done. He said, I understand authority because I take orders myself and I also give orders. So I understand authority. Well, see, the centurion was attri attributing uh, great the, the faith to understanding authority and submitting to authority. Okay, so then Jesus said, I have not found this great of faith. He marveled. Okay, so the, the centurion is expressing his faith through the understanding of authority. And because of that, Jesus gave him his answer. And, and, and he never, Jesus never spoke against Rome. He didn't speak against the government. And, and this centurion worked for Rome. Rome is, is part of the intrusion into Israel uh, the conquest had happened. They took over Jerusalem, and then the Pharisees were handed Jesus over to to the government to be crucified. You know, but Jesus never spoke against the government, and yet this man understood authority, and so he understood faith. Okay, so great faith has to do with understanding authority. So because of that, I saw that people down here on the earth, that we as Christians don't understand authority, so we don't have great faith. The reason we don't understand authority is because we don't hear enough about the crucified life. We don't allow the holy fire to come in and purify us 
so it doesn't burn out those impurities, all the different things that hinder us in our walk of understanding faith. Understanding faith is knowing that it's the God kind of faith. That is, is that if God's thought it, and he says it, he does it, that's it, period. So if Jesus said you're healed, if Jesus said you're free, if Jesus said you got a bright future, then that's the way it's going to be. That great faith is knowing that Jesus has authority to say that and do it, to perform it. But he is not going to renege on his word. So he's spoken many, many things over you. He's spoken concerning you. Many words have come. And this weekend, I was told to do this because this is the weekend where things change. And how they change is, is the holy fire starts to burn out anything that's hindering your faith, that is hindering your understanding of authority. Great faith. Jesus said, I have not found this great a faith in all of Israel. Centurion understood that Jesus was full of authority, that he was the head of the universe. And his word over you, speaking over you, this weekend is causing doors that need to be shut to shut and causing doors that need to be open to be open right now. And that's why we're doing this. You are being set free. You are being, get, you are being given permission to move out in faith, to move out in the trust, the God kind of faith, which has to do with authority, which has to do with discipline, obedience. If if uh, the centurion had not taken God at his word through Jesus, his servant would not have been healed. But he said, you just say the word and it'll be done. That is great faith. And that's the way you are going to walk this life out. That's the way I've, I've, I've seen this development by yielding to the holy fire is that it burns out these things that, that hinder my faith so that I, when God speaks, I obey. When God says something, I go, well, it's done then. I don't have to worry about it again. That's why I don't judge others. You know, even if people hinder you, reject you, it doesn't matter. God has already spoken on your behalf. He's already singing songs of deliverance over you. That's what the word of God says in Zephaniah chapter 3. Um, it says in 17, he said that he's a warrior and that he sings songs of deliverance over you. I mean, how good is that? You know, while you're sleeping, the Lord is singing over you. The, the devil cannot stop what God has spoken over you. So write out your vision this weekend. Let this, this uh, day, Saturday, um, let, let it be the day when you decide that I'm going to live a crucified life. I'm going to let holy fire have its way. And I'm going to see the freedom come. And I'm going to see the, break, the breakthrough and the overthrow in my life. Remember this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, in the New Living Translation says, For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So there's freedom. When the Spirit of the Lord is, is with you, there's complete freedom. If there's not freedom, then the Spirit of the Lord isn't there with you. And you need to ask Him to, to manifest Himself. So the enemy is going to be overthrown, and he's going to have to honor you because He's going to have to pay you back sevenfold for what he has stolen from you. Okay, in Romans 14, verse 8, it says, For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord. See, that should be our attitude right there. Is that your attitude? This is in Romans 14, 8. The Spirit of the Lord has, given, um, has, has been given full reign in your life. He's been, he's been given the ability to reign and rule in your life. You should never take that back. You should never uh, say, I don't want help. Don't step back from what God has called you to do, but step back from your own agenda, from your own understanding. Lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path. Okay, you are not from this kingdom down here. You are from the kingdom of heaven. You are not dwelling down here in this realm as your home. This is where you're visiting. Your home is in heaven. You are strangers in this world. The, the, the holy fire 
is going to cause you to be separate. And this is all going to become evident to you as you yield this. This is all over the world. I, I saw that the change that happens this year is amazing. You know, the, the, the bumps in the road that we go through, it's just causing us to run to God. It's just causing us to be healed. To, to allow God to heal us, to be our healer. It's causing God to be our protection. It's just, it's just Satan always overplays his hand. He always does. So now the friends that you thought you had, you don't have anymore, but God's going to bring you good friends. He's going to, he's going to bring you crazy people that believe God. And you're going to see who those people are. The people that, that love their God are going to do ex exploits for God. That's how you're going to tell. Um, there's a separation already started. A lot of people have not passed their tests. You know, they, they've become the tares instead of the wheat. They've become the goats instead of the sheep. They've been, they've been separated. They're, they're the ones that are messing with their, their oil lamps right now because they didn't allow God to fill them and get them ready. You have to be ready at all times. You have to be ready for what God is, is wanting to do. In your life, he's already preemptively caused you to be, be uh, full of provision. You're to be full of provision to help others. And that is God's perfect will for you. Uh, okay, in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, it says, Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is, should be encouraging to you. This is part of the discipline that you submit to. This is part of the authority you submit to. This is the holy fire that you submit to. When you do this, God will teach you. He's going to show you exactly what you're supposed to do. I am fully confident of this. Paul said, those who walk in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8.8, 8. he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. That's in Galatians 6.8. And all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. That's in Romans 8.15. That is a, a beautiful chapter, by the way. If you want to grow spiritually like, like leaps and bounds, just live in Romans chapter 8. I mean, I'm telling you. Okay, here's some things in, in summary before we, we close out this session. Um, Jesus told me that fire, that holy fire, is to be your friend. Holy fire is your friend. So he appeared to me as a flame of fire, and he told me to yield to the fire. I saw him on fire, and the fire came on me. He said, yield to the fire. Okay, so my soul area started to hurt when this these flames came from him. and he told me that those were the things in my mind, will, and emotions that were not right, and they needed to be burned up. So he pointed me, and he said, yield to the fire. See, my soul needed to have some work done on it, and the holy fire was wanting to get rid of all the things in it. The Holy Spirit was, was wanting to get rid of all the things in my soul that weren't right, in my emotions, in my thinking. I didn't reject him that day. I didn't reject the fire that day. And I began to see healing come in a powerful way. The only way, the only way that you can make it in this life is by allowing Jesus to live his life out through you. Now, to do that, you have to get out of the way. The only way that you're ever going to be successful in this life is to let Jesus walk in you. Are you ready to do that? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for the crucified life. I thank you. Father, for holy fire, and I thank you for all the people all over the world, all the students in, in the Warrior Notes School of Ministry, all the partners all over the world that are, that are helping Warrior Notes. Thank you, Father, for all those who are watching, that right now the shift has happened wherever they are as they watch this, and this is the time and the season when they see the shift happen in the Spirit where they go into overthrow. This is where the crucified life and the holy fire start to work in us in a strong way. And Father, we see this move of God that you want from the, the Father God is going to move by his spirit in the glory. And I thank you for it, Father, that it's gonna happen, that it's happening and that the flesh is getting out of the way, that people's agenda is getting out of the way, that lack of knowledge is going. In Jesus' name, as the Holy Spirit,
has free reign, free reign to give wisdom and understanding in the name of Jesus. Well, thanks for joining me on this afternoon session. This has been amazing. And the power of God is so strong, and this will not leave you. This is permanent. So God is going to work all these things out in your life. Be encouraged, and remember that we come back tonight at, at 7 p.m. Central Time for the, the evening session. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you then.